The People's House will continue to be a house divided, at least by party. The chamber with the red carpet, the Senate, will stay in Republican hands. The one with the green carpet, the House, will stay with the Democrats, but by a smaller margin. The DFLs had a 75 to 59 majority the past two years, but that appears to be going to a much tighter 69 to 65 split, depending on the final results of recounts. We're running on an outdated map. So when you look at the popular vote in Minnesota, it doesn't match the legislative map yet. If you look at the census data, it's true. Rural districts haven't grown as fast as the urban and suburban ones, and in some cases have lost population since the last time House districts were drawn up in 2012. But Republicans are excited about major flips, taking out longtime incumbent Gene Poppy in Austin, and the apparent defeat of Julie Sandstead, breaking a long streak of Democrats in Hibbing. The Democrats were predicting they were going to win seats and that we were going to lose, and and so we're happy that uh, what we thought was going to happen is what happened. We picked up a, a large number of seats. In the Senate, Democrat Ann Johnson Stewart flipped an open Republican seat in Plymouth, and the DFL took down Republican incumbent Dan Hall in Burnsville. But Republicans ousted Democratic incumbents Matt Little in Lakeville and Dan Sparks in Austin. So it's back to a 35 to 32 GOP majority there. This will kind of moderate uh, what we what we see coming out of the Democrats in the legislature, and at least I hope it does. We have a pandemic and we have an economic crisis, and I think it will take all of our time and energy. John Croman, CARE 11 News. DFL senators today re-elected Susan Kent of Woodbury as the state minority leader. The other leadership posts in the legislature will be decided over the next two days.